Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is episode 22 of Photo Critiques. And in Photo Critiques, people send me in some of their best photography and I critique each image with suggestions on how they could improve it. And today I'm really pleased to critique the work of Steve Ellis. And we're doing something a little different with Steve. Steve sent me in one JPEG, which he processed, and then he sent me in three raw images, and he wanted me to kind of process them the way I would do it. I'm a little reluctant to process someone else's photography, but I'm going to do some slight processing on his, only to show you how I would process something to bring out the stronger points of an image and to try to diminish the weaker points of an image. So that's why I'm going to process this image. And um, we'll get to that in a minute. If you guys could do me a favor though, if you haven't already, if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel and share and like the videos, I'd really, really appreciate it. And I'd like to thank everyone who has done so already. Thank you very much. Okay, Steve's image. This first one here is one that he processed. And I want to point out his style, which is different than mine. Steve likes the desaturated look, which is a very popular style nowadays. He doesn't like images that are um, look over-processed, that look oversaturated, and that's great. I think this is a beautiful image. I love what Steve did with this. Steve actually sent me the raw file of this too, and he wanted me to process it and send it back to him so he could see what I did. And uh, you know, I, you, you guys know my if you watch my Lightroom videos, I overdo it. I tend to overdo it. What I do is I process an image generally and I let it set for a week and I come back to it and I back things off a little bit because it then looks to me to be too overprocessed. And in when I did this image, the beach was much more yellow. The sky was a lot more blue, a little more blue, I'd say. Um, and um, a lot less haze, but I think the haze makes this shot actually when I look at Steve's image. This is a great shot. I really can't even offer a critique on how to improve this image because it's just beautiful. It's just a beautiful shot. So um, that's the JPEG he sent me. Now this next one, excuse me for one second, there we go. Uh, this next one is a raw image and um, I think he told me he was on um, uh, vacation in Ireland and took this shot. And one point I want to make about if you ever get encountered when you're going to photograph uh, like something with high cliffs on either side, it's kind of a tough shot to get because you have to be there at a specific time of day. If the sun was too far to the left, we'd have all this side in shadows and the shadows would be cast down onto the water and similarly if it was to the right all these trees would be in dark shadows and all this would be real bright it'd be a very difficult scene to record in this case Steve got there at pretty much the right time with the, the uh, sun shining equally on both banks now in you know as far as the uh, critiquing the shot itself the um, typically, as you guys know, in landscapes, when I, I mentioned many times, I, I'd like to have a foreground element, something in the foreground. If it could have been, you know, a little little child, you know, in sitting in the water, just looking that way, or something, or it could have been just a bunch of rocks, a little rock formation in the water, something that's interesting right here. Now we can't always get that, so what we if we can't have anything interesting in the foreground, we'd like something in the midground or background. Maybe right here we had a fishing boat with a, you know one guy in it with you could see his pole you know into the water. That would be add some interest. This water is a natural leading line, leading our eye through the shot, and it's um, helped along by these uh, shores of the banks, which are receding parallel lines, receding lines, not parallel lines, just receding lines that help lead our eye through the shot. So we'd like to have maybe a fisherman here. Okay, we can't have that. Well, lastly, we could have something interesting in the background. This sky, maybe real foreboding sky, you know, very uh, dark clouds. It was about to have, a, you know, the thunderstorms coming in, something like that. We really don't have it in the raw file, but there is some information there. So when I'm going to process this shot, I'm going to process it because I don't have foreground element. I don't have really a midground element. I'm going to process it to bring out the sky. And 
what I would do first, oh, here's one little tip too before I actually process the photo. You see there's haze in the shot. If you ever have any shot with haze and you don't want it there, um, contrast slider will get rid of the haze. All you got to do is turn contrast up and you can see the haze disappears. It's just a little tip if you ever have a shot with haze in it. So I'm going to reset that slider. Now as I adjust this shot, I'm not going to really explain too much about the technicalities of Lightroom. If you guys want to learn how to use Lightroom, see my Lightroom training videos. I got 20 something videos so far and they're still going. Check that out and I explain uh, Lightroom from the beginning, right from the beginning like you just didn't even know how to use it. And um, check that out. I, I give more details of explaining all these sliders and what they do. All right, now to process it, I want to bring out this guy. First, I'm going to process in the basic panel like I normally do on landscapes. I turn highlights all the way down and I turn shadows all the way up. I'm going to adjust the white and black point and to adjust the white point, I hold the Option or Alt key down click on the white slider, it turns black, and I move it to the right until I get some color or whites coming through. And as you can see in the lower left hand corner, I already have some. And I just want a tiny bit. So right there is good. Now I'm going to go to the black slider and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hold the Option or Alt key down. I'm going to click down on that. This time it turns white. And I'm going to move to the left until I get some blacks coming through. And I, I normally bring this one considerably further than I brought the white one. All right, now we added some contrast to the shot already, and, and we you know added a little more definition to the trees by doing that. Next thing I do is I'm going to bring clarity up. This is a real clean raw file, so I could bring clarity up pretty high. After that, I'm going to bring contrast up. I'm going to bring contrast up, and that will further diminish that haze that was back in here. All right. Um, so far so good. I have the water and these trees on the banks, you know, pretty much the way I like them. And the sky, I started to bring a little definition out of the sky. Now you could put a graduated filter in here for the sky, but I typically don't like graduated filters as much because it makes the top darker than the light. I don't always think that looks natural in a lot of shots. Sometimes it does, but usually in my mind it doesn't. So I'm going to use a brush. I'm going to bring exposure down um, just a little bit, like, I don't know, something there. We could readjust it when we're done. Um, and I'm going to use a big brush. I'm going to have it heavily feathered all the way, and I'm going to have auto mask on. And I'm going to have the flow and the density all the way up. And I'm just going to paint this brush into the sky to add some definition to the clouds. Okay. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to add some clarity to this same thing I just did. Not that much. Not even that much. Maybe that much. We're going to add some contrast. Okay, now I'm not going to fuss with it too much. Uh, if um, this were my shot and I was um, processing it for my portfolio or something, I would spend an hour messing around with this guy because I don't like this white over here, this little too black over here a little too black over here. So don't judge me on my processing. I'm just trying to give you the idea is because of the lead, natural leading lines we have here and we don't have a foreground element, we don't have a midground element, I want to process this sky. And I want the sky to draw the user's attention, so the viewer's attention. So the viewer looks, they kind of look through the shot and they come up through it. To help further enhance that, uh, now I would do some more with the other uh, panels, but I'm not going to do it here uh, just for the sake of showing you what I do. But I, I like adding vignettes. Um, in this case, a lighter vignette. Well, it, it again helps draw the user's attention towards the middle. Um, you know, like the, you know, this really is a horrible um, processing job that I just did. But I, I'm just doing it really fast, so you can get an idea of what I mean. We want to process it. To bring up the bring out the strong points of the shot and diminish the weak points of the shot. The weak point of the shot is no foreground element. So I don't want you your eye to linger here. I want the viewer's eye to linger up in here. So that's why I want this sky enriched. All right. So we'll go on to the next shot. This technically is is a nice shot too. There's really not much to comment as far as how I could critique this shot to make him improve, like he could stand in a different spot, he could use different focal lights, something like that. 
No, uh, this is a nice shot. The idea is these, the, it's these um, the bark and the trunks of these trees are kind of a natural frame to lead your eye through the shot. Um, very simple shot. There's really not um, a lot of I could critique on it technically. Now, in processing, what I want to do is I want to look at a shot and I want to say, what do I want to bring out? What do I want the viewer to notice? Right away that jumps out to me at least are the trunks of these trees. Now to you it might be these ferns here. If that is then you develop it and try to bring these ferns out. Now I'm seeing these trunks of these trees. I want those to be more prominent. So I'm going to develop it real quick again. I'm going to do what I normally do Excuse me. on landscapes. I'm bringing highlights all the way down, shadows all the way up. And I'm going to set my white and black point exactly like I did in the previous shot, okay? And bring the black point down a little further. All right, now we added some contrast just by doing that. Now I'm going to add um, quite a bit of clarity. It's going to bring those, those trunks out better. It's bringing the detail out of this bark here. And I'm going to add some contrast too. That's going to do it even more. Okay, so now we have, in, in my opinion, these trees are a little more prominent in the shot. The next thing I like to do is I like to add brushes to add some texture and interest into the shot. We have this uniform green fern down here. Um, I'm gonna, I want to make some bright areas and some dark areas that will help lead your eye through the shot. Now the, in my opinion, we want our eye to go through these two trees. These are like natural framing right here. So I'm going to double click on new, or you just single click on new to get a new um, brush. Double click on effect to reset the brushes. And um, we're going to bring exposure up kind of high. It's going to look ridiculous when I paint it on, but it's high just so I could see where I'm painting. And um, you'll see in a minute. So as I paint it on, um, Kind of bring it over here. I'm going to make the brush a little smaller by hitting the left bracket key. And like over in here and over in here. And I'm going to bring that exposure down now because it is a little bright. Maybe to around like 27. Now I'm going to add a new brush by clicking new. Double click effect to reset it. And this time I'm going to bring exposure down a little bit. And I'm going to get a smaller brush by hitting the left bracket key. And I'm going to kind of outline where I just painted. And with the light brush, I'm going to outline it with this darker brush. It just helps add, add a little um, texture to the shot, a little more interest. I'm going to turn the brushes off. This is before I added the brush, and this is after I added the brush. What I'm going for here is I, these two trees are my main elements in my opinion and I want the viewer to look at it and just kind of look up through through the shot between these two trees. Next I want to bring the sky out. I want the sky a little bluer. So I'm going to close this brush down. I'm going to go into the HSL panel and I'm going to saturation. I'm going to bring blue up. So I'm increasing blue saturation. I'm going to go to the luminance uh, tab of this HSL and I'm going to bring the luminance of the blue down to make it a little darker. All right, so quickly what I did was is I added some brush strokes down here to help bring your your eye up and you're going to see this pretty blue up here eventually. Um, then I'm going to, you know, I would do more to detail and I do lens corrections. I'm not going to do that just for the sake of speed to get this video done tonight. And I'm going to add a vignette and that further helps draw the viewer's attention towards the middle of the shot. All right, so I'm going to hit the Y key. This is the before and this is the after. And I'm going to hit the Y key again. I can hit the backslash key. And when I hit the backslash key, that's the before. That's the raw image right there. This is after I did my processing. I kind of help. I hoped to draw the viewer's attention towards the middle and to bring out some of the the, the uh, intricacies of this bark on these trees. So that's that shot. And this very next shot is very similar. Uh, there's not much to critique here. He, he just you know took a shot of the woods really, and. Um, 
we have this uniform fern here. We do have this kind of natural triangle to me of this fern. So I want to use that as like an arrow to help the viewer look through the shot. So I'm going to go back to the basic panel again and I'm going to turn the highlights all the way down, the shadows all the way up, and I'm going to set the white and black point like I did before. Okay. And we'll bring this one a little further. We're going to turn clarity up. Again, watch my Lightroom training videos on YouTube on my website and I explain these sliders a lot better. Um, and you'll see why I do what I do. Now just doing that, I like what it did so far. It kind of brought out more detail in the trees and the trees look nicer with this brighter part and this darker part a little more prominent. I'm going to hit the backslash key and you'll see that the, um, the difference between the raw file, which was a lot flatter, and now so it added that kind of contrast that I'm, I'm looking for. I'm going to add a little vibrance too. Um, in this, it wouldn't hurt this picture to be a little greener. Okay, now I'm going to add these brush strokes I talk about. I'm going to double click, or just single click new, double click effect to reset them. I'm going to bring up exposure a little bit. Now it's up pretty high right now, obviously. I'm going to turn that down when I'm ready. I'm going to make a big brush and we're going to outline this area here in this area here. That's that tr natural kind of triangle I'm talking about. Okay, we're going to bring this way down now. We don't want that that bright. That looks silly. Okay, now we're going to get a new brush and double click on effect. And the other thing too, you could hold the Alt or Option key in and re effect turns into reset. You could click on it. We're going to bring this down this time and I'm going to get a little smaller brush and we're going to darken parts of this image here. Okay, I'm doing this real fast, obviously, so, you know, don't judge me too harshly. Okay, so I have this lighter area here, a little darker here. It's I hope to bring everyone's attention up through the shot. That's what I'm going for when I add these brushes. The other thing is now after I did you know lens corrections and detail and did some other things with the other panels is I would add a vignette to this shot for sure to help bring the user's attention more towards the middle of the shot. And that's um, in my opinion would what I would do to help strengthen the shot. There's the before, there's the after. And you could see that's what I would do. Um, I guarantee that um, Steve would do it totally different and his way probably would be better because he had the vision of this shot when he took it, not me. What I'm trying to prove here is that if you take a shot, you can't always be at the spot, especially when you're doing travel photography. You just can't be here when the light is perfect, the sky is perfect, when there's a fisherman right here, or when there's a little child playing in the water. Um, you just can't always be there at the optimum time. But you can take the shot into Lightroom and you could process the photograph to bring out the better parts of the shot. And that's what I tried to do in these three images, was to bring out the shot um, to bring out the strong points of the shot and to make it um, interesting to look at. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and you understand where I was going uh, with this. I really appreciate Steve sending me in his images and allowing me to mess with them. And um, hopefully um, Steve processes these images the way he'd like to. And um, if he ever does and he puts them on Flickr or something, I will update my webpage and, and YouTube uh, where he has these images so you can look at the way he did it. I'm going to delete mine because it's not my work and I don't feel right even doing it. I really feel funny about doing this, but I'd really like to thank Steve again. Very, very good sport to let me do this. And I'd um, like to thank everyone for watching my videos. Uh, Lightroom series is going like crazy. I got that um, Photoshop for Photographers is, is doing real well. Um, the Elements, uh, Photoshop Elements um, is coming along. And of course, these critiques, I get tons in, and I'm doing the best I can to keep up with them. So thank you again for watching. I really appreciate it.